I bought this VW Touareg to flip and make a profit on, but it might be a big mistake. Spoiler, it was a huge mistake, but whilst I'm showing you how to avoid losing money on flipping cars, stick around and I'll show you how you can win this brand new Tang Tools half inch socket set. So the first big problem with this car is only goes to about 30 miles per hour. I'm hoping it is just the DPF, 200 pounds, not too much. I paid one and a half thousand pounds for this car. In perfect working order, it should fetch about two and a half thousand to three thousand pounds. But the second big issue in this car is the MOT is due in about six days. So I've got to get on with it very quickly. So straight on to removing the DPF. Previous owner has tried to get it out and snapped every single bolt. So this is going to be fun. So the first thing I tried was to heat up the exhaust with a blowtorch and smash the old bolt out with a punch, but it just wasn't moving. So, onto the drill. It's not working, I've snapped three bits, but I'm gonna keep going. Feels free. So I turned on easy mode and decided to just to rip it apart via the flexi joint. As you can see, it's super rusty. I'll deal with that later. I wanted to get this DPF in. And then the first bolt was this back of the pressure sensor on the downpipe of the DPF. So after undoing that bolt, I've just found out there's another one even further up. <sighs> so I'm gonna try and get that out. I should have known, DPFs are awful to change. I don't know why I forgot that they were, but onwards. Eventually I got those two pressure sensors off the back with a long spanner. And then I struggled with the sensors on the front of the DPF. So to get these off, I've gotta grab some crow's foot spanners and I'm hoping they make it a little bit easier. Lovely jubbly. Finally got all those sensors off, so let's get it disconnected from the turbo. Easy. Pop that up there. After removing the V-band clamp, this was the last bolt remaining and it was a pain, but with this monstrosity that I built, I managed to untwist it. The next big issue is trying to get that big boy out of this tiny hole. I dropped one of the nuts in there and I can't find it, so. I love this. I absolutely love working on cars, especially VWs. Yes. <clears throat> Finally. So as you can see, to get the DPF out and back in, I had to move the EGR cooler out of the way and the thermostat. So unbolted that and got it in. Let's go. I managed to get the DPF down. Doing everything in reverse, I just reconnected everything I disconnected. And those eagle eye viewers will notice there was no gasket on the coolant connector, which I found later on. So I had to take it all apart and put it back together with that gasket back in. And then it's worth noting that when you're putting together meeting points like this, you want to tighten the bolts alternately so it doesn't end up squishing or warping the gasket. This is going far too well. I spoke far too soon. I wanted to get the EGR all connected and I'm going to put the casing back on here. It is time. How does a straight five diesel sound? Turbo exit exhaust. Your turbo whistle. It is smoking from down here, which I didn't touch anything down there, so I'm thinking it is carb cleaner residue. At least we've got no coolant leaks, that's good. Anyway, I'm gonna quickly check the turbo, it's fine, there's no play in that, and then I'll put the V-band clamp on, try and get the DPF all mounted back up, and get all the sensors in. Played all the codes, and it drives fine. The glow plug light is still on, and I'm not sure why. Still haven't got the center pipe in yet. I've got an MOT in two days time, so I have to get it sorted. I can't find the new one local to buy that'll be here in time, and I just can't get this old one separated. I'm gonna get that center pipe done one way or another, and then get on to cleaning it and fixing up those other little issues. I managed to grind off the head of the bolts, and then drill through it eventually, and separate it with a pry bar. Then onto the key shell, I bought a new one off Amazon for about £10 and then I replaced the key battery as well and key is working but the rear door doesn't lock with the central locking so I'm not sure about that I might have to take the door card off and have a look at that but another, another issue two problems done just need to clean it inside and out and this thing's a mess so for the wheels I used Dragon's Blood pH neutral wheel cleaner and fallout remover really get great products would recommend and all the links to all my equipment and chemicals will be in the description if you are thinking about picking anything like this up, please use the affiliate links in the description because I get a tiny cut, which helps me buy new equipment, new cars for you guys, and level up the video production with new cameras, lenses, stuff like that. So I was using Built Hamber Auto Foam as the snow foam, some nice soft bristled brushes to get into those cracks and hard to reach places. 
And then after that, obviously rinse all the snow foam off and back to shampooing the car with Meguiar's Ultimate Car Shampoo. Don't forget to stick around because I'll be announcing who won the previous quarter inch Deltec giveaway and telling you what you need to do so you can be in with a chance to win this brand new Teng Tools half inch socket set. The RRP is for about £80. I'm using a Nilfisk pressure washer. I've used it for my business for over a year now and I've had no issues with it whatsoever. I could do with a longer cable on it, but other than that, it's perfect for what I'm using it for. So my dad very kindly helped me dry off the car to get it done faster, because as you can see, the weather was dreadful. Right, that's it. And then onto the windows, I used two microfiber cloths, one to spread the turtle wax glass cleaner, and then another fresh clean one to wipe it off. And as you can see, the car is looking fantastic. It's gonna be easy to sell like this, I'm sure. Next, I'm throwing away these interior mats because I've got some brand new ones that I've ordered and then onto the dreaded interior clean. So it starts off with hoovering everything down, obviously. Very satisfying, but it does take a while. Make sure to get under these bits, like underneath the seats and behind the seats. And try your hardest to get into all these cracks and crevices because it does make a difference. Now here, I was a bit confused because I went to change the pollen filter and there was none in there. But never mind, in goes the new one, button it all up and continue with the clean. So it took a while to hoover this because it was full of dog hairs and it was definitely a farm vehicle at some point because I even found pheasant feathers hidden in between the seats. But then onto the hard plastics with some all-purpose cleaner to get rid of all those spilt drinks and gunk that's been sitting there for god knows how long. But after this, the interior was actually looking great. It was a massive difference to how bad it was earlier. And then just a fresh microfiber cloth and a spray of water to do the rest of the interior. So I've just got back from the garage where the car's been in for its MOT and it has failed ah. so it's failed on the rear left caliper is sticking when driving the rear left spring has snapped parking brake efficiency below requirement that's the handbrake it should just need tightening up i need to wet back the seats because they are absolutely rancid and the car stinks so i'm hoping that's going to improve it let's just get this car fixed mot'd cleaned and sold so first thing Getting rid of this bolt, it was really difficult to untighten because of the rust, but managed to get that on the bottom of the strut. There's four of these bolts on top holding the top of the strut in, and then after I've released this bolt and hammered it out, it came out pretty easy. So next, applying some spring compressors so I don't get a spring through my window, hammering off this top little cover thing, and then taking it apart so I can replace that snap spring. Should be attached there. Again, to tighten it, I had to use an open-ended socket, which my dad had, which was fantastic, and he just held the end with a pair of pliers. <laughs> Everything in reverse again, back into the car, and then onto the handbrake. Caliper next get that changed and see if we can tighten the handbrake. I've just now hit a thousand subscribers and I am over the moon. So at the end of the video, I'm gonna be revealing the winner of the Deltec tool set, very exciting. One of you is getting a very nice quarter inch socket set. Oh, that booty. Yeah, boy. So we just used this here six foot six pole to lever it down and managed to get the bolt through. So that is done, just a caliper now. 20 minute job, he says. <laughs> so for the caliper, pretty simple. You've got these two bolts at the back, which need an Allen bit, and then the caliper slides off. Remove the pads. And 
remove the pad sensor. And then in with the brand new caliper. So as you can impact to get the trusty brake hose off. Tighten the new one back in. Put the pads in. Connect it to those two bolts at the back. And also, if you've got some scotch bright and an impact gun, it makes cleaning your guide things so much easier. Yeah, I do. Are you leaving the spring compressor on? The spring compressor on. Um, for now, yeah. <laughs> might got about that. That'd be a bit clunky. <laughs> and you want to remember to use some copper grease on all the bits of the caliper that slide, so your guide pins and where the caliper slides along with the caliper holder. And then after that, simple case of bleeding the brakes, and we're done. So, finally done. <laughs> I'm buzzing, as you can tell. Carpet's on, all sorted and the spring is done i just need to do the parking brake now so it's easy you just have to put a screwdriver and turn a little cog inside with the parking brake on until it stops turning so that should be simple i've got it back into the mot tomorrow my e91 i think the flywheel has decided to explode so that's not drivable anymore so i've got two cars and i can't drive either of them don't forget if you put spring compressors on that you need to take them off Finally done for the day. Next thing is MOT, next time you see me, I'll be telling you whether it passed or failed. And we've got a pass certificate now, so I'm happy about that. So next thing is just wet back in these seats because they're grim and then hopefully putting it up for sale. But it's time to announce the giveaway winner. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a way to do it for a random subscriber, so I'm gonna do it for a random comment on my most recent video. Let's pick a winner. Oh. Me thighs. Right, so I've figured it out. I've got to press start here. I've got 56 unique comments and that's without duplicates, etc. So I'm gonna click start. Who is it gonna be? Haxer. I'm really happy it went to someone who's excited about the new videos. So I hope you're really happy with your Dell Tech tool set. And you know what? Because after a week of hitting a thousand subscribers, I've already hit three and a half thousand, which is insane to me because it took me six months to get just 900. And to say a huge thank you to you guys for that, I've partnered up with Tang Tools to give away this brand new half inch socket set. So a huge thanks to Tang Tools for partnering with me for this video. If you want to win, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, the link will be in the bio and post a comment on this video and to choose a winner i'll do it on a live stream on this date but don't worry if you can't get there i'll still message you on instagram tang also sent some surprise gifts so i'll be doing a few second third fourth prizes on the live stream so get subscribing following and commenting and you might win this set and now onto the satisfying wet back again all products will be in the description but i just use an interior cleaner all over the carpet use this drill brush attachment to agitate it and then suck it all up. I tend to use boiling water in the wet vac. I find it helps loosen that dirt. Just give it a quick spray and then just keep going until the water comes through the gun clear. I've run out of water already just from doing the boot. That was pretty bad, but I don't think the footwells are going to be any better. As you can see, it looks great. So straight onto the rest of the car. Can't wait to get these brand new mats in and be done with the interior. This is one of those things that makes a huge difference to the car. It got rid of the horrible smell and the carpets literally transformed from brown back to how they should be, a nice grey. It's a shame I'll be covering it up with those mats, but they do look pretty good. And then I'm just putting some new car smell air freshener on the wet carpets. So as you can see, that's the interior all done. Thank God, it's my least favorite bit about flipping cars. I'm going to leave the windows cracked, keep the engine running, get all the heaters on full blast, make sure all that stuff dries off. My friend has got an Autel computer, so I'm going to use that. Hopefully that can tell the ECU it's had a new DPF, reset all the values to zero, and that engine check code should go, and it might run a little bit better as well. But if I can't do that, I'm really going to struggle to make money on this car. I definitely bought this car for too much money. I've put about £2,200 into it. Looking online, I think if I sell it on Marketplace, I'll be lucky to get between two and a half and three. So literally every penny at this point really matters to whether I'm even gonna make profit or not, never mind how much. Let's see if we can clear these codes. So I've just been to my mates to try and reset the DPF and we've come to the conclusion that the exhaust pressure sensor was malfunctioning. So 
ordered one of them, it's 50 quid, it's one bolt, two vacuum lines and a plug, so if that clears everything up then it was probably that all along and I didn't need to spend like two days getting a DPF in and spending 200 plus pounds on it, so if this doesn't work, oh, I'm done with this car. It's the moment of truth. Glow plug lights on, engine check lights still on, but we've got a DPF light now. So after plugging it in and trying to reset the values, I found out the exhaust, <laughs> as I was saying before my dad started laughing at me, the temperature before turbocharger was reading 930 degrees, so I need a new sensor. I think I've just wasted 50 quid, I'll show you why. So here, plug that the sensor goes into, and there's two wires and only one of them is attached. This car has been a nightmare start to finish, but I'm going to see what I can do about that wire maybe try and solder something new in um, and then hope that this works big time. It's certainly not pretty, but it works. I'm gonna have to redo that, I think. Let's see if there's an engine code. Let's start it and see what happens. No engine jet light, no engine jet light, no engine jet light! I've been doing this long enough not to get excited just yet. I mean, I'm trying not to get excited, but the glow plug light is gone. The engine jet light has gone after clearing the code. I'm gonna let it run for a little bit. I'm shaking, I'm that excited. Oh, it could be finally time to put the lock in on the rear door and get it sold. On this episode of Dad inspects my soldering work. Oh dear. Yeah, what happened with the heat shrink? Uh, <laughs> man, drives so well. But turns out all this car need, granted it did need the caliper and the spring, but the only other thing it needed was a 50 pound sensor and a bit of soldering. Oh, <laughs> So the final bit of work that I needed to do, I pulled it into my mate's garage, took the door card off, took the inner skin off, and then replaced the central locking unit. It cost me, I can't remember, about 30 quid from a second hand dealer on eBay. Managed to insert that, put it all back together again, and I was very happy when it started working. It took me about three tries to disconnect it and reconnect it because I didn't put the handle in right and it wasn't working, but we got there in the end. So it's the day after, the central locking is working fine, no engine check lights, the car is ready to sell. I've just given it a clean inside and out, put them fresh mats in because I've been daily in it. Back to the Touareg. So I went out and took some great pictures of the car once it was nice and clean and then listed it up for sale. So I started off with it on eBay auctions. It sold three times, once for 3,000, once for 2,680, once for 2,500, but none of the winners wanted to come and pick it up. But anyway, I left it on Facebook Marketplace for 3,000, kept moving it down, moved the price down to 2,450, negotiated a deal with someone and I managed to sell it for 2,350 pounds. I'm so glad it's sold because this video has been about two months in the making. Once we add up all the expenses, it's not such a good story. I bought the car for £1,550. The insurance cost me £150.52. The tax cost me £110.36. MOT, £35. The spring and caliper to pass the MOT, £155.56. The interior mats, £39.99. The central locking mechanism, £43.91. The key shell, £9.99. The wheel balancing, £32. The DPF cost me £260 pounds 66 pence the exhaust pressure sensor cost me 48 pounds 49 pence luckily i did end up selling the old dpf to a scrapyard and i got 90 pounds for that and that leaves me with a huge profit of minus two pounds 48 so it goes to show it's not always big numbers when you're flipping cars but the advice that i can give you is make sure you get it for the right price because i paid too much for this car make sure you check when you're buying it that there's nothing wrong with it that they haven't talked about because this had way more problems than they initially said. And yeah, if you're not sure about a car, just don't buy it. But if you wanna see a video where I actually make some profit, check this one out. And please subscribe and like the video so I can afford to pay my rent this month because I'm down £2.48.